Welcome to Straight Line MTB, and today we're doing the full review of the 2021 Common Scout made at TR29. And this thing's so bright, I had to wear my shades. Thank you for joining us today as we talk about the full ride review of the 2021 made at TR29. So we built this up as a frame only option. Um, if you're interested in what parts we put on it, go to our channel and check it out because we put some pretty baller stuff on there and some things that are a little bit different that are surprising. So you want to check it out and get some good ideas for things that if you're building up a frame to check out. So anyways, let's just jump right into it. So on Common Seattle's website, they have this bike under the trail category and the TR is going to have you thinking that it is a trail bike. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about my findings riding this bike. So let's just get right into the climbing section of this bike. So this bike, the trail name is going to be a bit deceiving because I don't feel that this is a trail bike. So riding like the Orbea Occam that I've ridden in the past and the brand new YT Izzo that we're currently riding, those are trail bikes. So those bikes are really you know, great climbers and they'll get you down the hill. The TR is more of a sit and get type of bike. So you're gonna be in the saddle more. I found myself really just sitting and climbing. Um, it still is a pretty long bike. It is shorter than the all mountain, ver the AM version of this bike. Um, this large size that we're riding has a wheelbase of about just over 1,250 millimeters. So that's uh, enduro, that's enduro bike category. The reach is about 485, which is also really long. But I will say sitting in this bike is really what you feel like you're doing is you're sitting in it. Um, that super, super steep seat tube angle at 78.6, that is pretty crazy steep, but it feels really comfortable. I don't feel a super long reach. Um, I, one thing I did feel is that the stack on it was a little bit low. So you might want to, you know, run your spacers up a little bit higher. At least for me, I felt like sitting down, I was a little more hunched over. Um, but the cockpit feels really comfortable. It's able to find traction really well on those, those technical climbs. You're not spinning out as much as you would on a shorter bike. Um, but you do lose some of that move maneuverability because that wheelbase is uh, on the longer side. Um, I, this is one of the first, maybe the only bikes that I have ridden. And I alluded to this on the first ride review that I really felt like I wanted to stand up and mash up some of the more steeper sections. So that was pretty cool because I've never had that sensation, even riding that Orbea Occam that we had in the past and even in the YT Izzo. So I don't know if it's just the geometry of it, or it really feels good going uphill. Um, like I said, that, that we built this up as a frame. So the shock that I'm running on this is the Manitou Mara Pro. It's off the shelf. It's not tuned for this bike. So I did have a little bit of suspension movement, but I wouldn't say it's anything that was off-putting. Um, I did find myself using the climb switch a little bit more often than I did on the AM version of this bike, where the AM we talked about that has almost zero movement. Um, and I think that is due to the shock being tuned for the bike. Um, but again, nothing crazy bad. I mean, it, it, it's really a steady climber, but I wouldn't say climbing is its focus. So speaking of climbing, I did test this monster out on a 27 mile Sufferfest out in the Tahoe area. Um, riding this bike really made me feel like I wished I would have brought the YT Izzo as I don't, you know, the, the TR name, the trail insinuation of this bike, I think is a deceiving because it isn't, you know, great greatest climber, you know, for what it is, a 140 millimeter bike, you know, this bike comes in just over 35 pounds. It does a great job, but I don't feel like it's made for those super long, crazy rides. For me, I'm sure some of you guys out there with the stronger legs and harder hearts can go out there and pound it. But for me, I was really feeling like the YT Izzo or something like the Orbea Occam or a more trail oriented bike would be something that I would have taken on that ride. Um, not to say that on the downhill parts of that ride was where I was like, oh, okay, now we're having more fun. But as the miles kept going, I was, ugh, I was, I was struggling a little bit. So now let's talk about what this beast is all about and it's the downhill. Yes, it's gonna get you to the top and it's not gonna kill you too much, 
But once you point downhill, you're going to be so, so happy that you brought this monster because it it's really going to surprise you. Being 140 millimeters in the rear, I know that's traditional, more aggressive trail category. This thing feels like it has 160 millimeters in the rear. It just gobbles up the descents. Um, I currently have the fork at 150 millimeter, but you can run it at 160. And I really, really feel like that that's what you guys should be doing. If you're making a frame or you bought it off the shelf, I really think that running that fork at 160 millimeters is really gonna bring this bike up alive and it will help bring that front end up closer. As I talked about on climbing, it was a little bit low in the front, but you're gonna have that extra suspension because this bike, it really wants to smash. It's got that 1250 millimeter plus wheelbase and it gives you so much confidence. The rear end, shockingly, the chain stays are just a touch longer than the, all, the AM version. Even drop it into some black diamond and double black trails. Don't let the 140 millimeters deceive you because it's able and capable. It wants to go. You know, you're going to be, you're going to maneuver it around a little bit more than say the AM version or a bigger, longer travel enduro bike, but not much. I didn't feel like it gave up much to some of the other enduro bikes that I've ridden. Um, it does have that 64 and a half degree head tube angle, which is pretty slack for a trail slash enduro bike. And also talking about the weight, it, it is heavy, 35 pounds as we built this bike. And I think it's got a decent spec on it for weight wise. Um, but the weight does help you on the downhills because you do feel that just robust bike coming down. I'm not worried about anything cracking or denting. Um, it really gives you the confidence in that sense as well is that you're not riding some dainty small trail bike that you're really going to smash and go and not really worry about anything breaking or cracking, which is something that I've had some issue with in the past. So I've been getting some questions and I know it was an issue on past models is the width of the rear end. So the chain stay and the seat stay being wide where you're hitting your feet on it. I will say it really depends for me on what pedals I'm running. I did notice, so the one up composite pedals that I run on this bike where they sit close to the crank is where I would touch the, the seat stay just a little bit. Um, I generally run my foot out a little bit more, so I don't have that problem, but I did notice switching to those pedals that I was, you know, catching the seat stay just a little bit. Moving to the Deity Def Traps where, you know, you have about, you know, half an inch before the actual pedal platform starts where your foot's sitting a little bit further out. It was less of an issue for me and I really rarely ever hit the chain stay or seat stay on it. So again, I know Common Cell did narrow it down for this model. So that might be something that you can consider. Um, the DMR Vault is another pedal that comes to mind that will kind of sit out a little bit more and give you that space. So if that is something you're finding, then switch up your pedals and see if that helps you out. So one other thing, being a press fit bottom bracket, I did have a Canyon Spectral in the past that had a press fit. That was my first press fit bottom bracket. And that one was creaky. This one, I have not found any creaks with it at all. Um, it's pretty silent. So that was concerning, but now not didn't find any issues with that. Um, again, I did talk about in the first ride review is the cable ports. And the covers, I really, really think those are really well done. Um, Common Sale did a good job with the just the fit and finish and the nice little touches. So on the bottom where the, the cables go in, there's some, I don't even know what to call them. There's things that push them down and keep them from sliding around, keep them quiet. They did come with the tubing to keep them from rattling around. The only issue is that the rubber on some of them would tear if you pulled them the wrong way. Not a horrible issue, but kind of a pain in the butt. I haven't reached out to Common Sale, but I'm sure they would take care of it, no issue. Another thing just to remember is that this comes with a big 34.6 or nine seat post. So it's the big fat seat post. So um, if you're ordering the frame from Common Sale, make sure you get the seat post clamp because it was a little bit difficult to find because it was a really big seat post clamp. And another thing that I noticed running a water bottle, because a lot of my rides, I can ride short little five, six mile um, shuttle runs. Uh, the water bottle, it only holds like a 20 ounce Camelback or something of that size. I would have liked to seen a little bit bigger for some of the longer rides, but 
Again, like I said, this isn't a bike that you're gonna probably ride for a super long time. So possibly that's not an issue, but I would like to see something that can run like a 28 or a 30 ounce water bottle. Also got another question about brake jack on the downhill when you're hitting that rear brake. I did notice a little bit of it stiffening up, um, but I wouldn't say it was anything that I had noticed on my own. I didn't really start thinking about it until somebody asked that question. I'm more of somebody who kind of just rides a bike and kind of adapts to it. So it wasn't something that was hindering. So you will notice it if you're looking for it, but I don't feel like it was anything that kind of made an issue where I was not happy about. Um, having those short chain stays is another thing to think about. I know some people like the short chain chase. I'm more of a fan of the longer chain stays, but again, with that wheelbase being long, I didn't find a problem with it. Um, this bike is maneuverable enough coming off some of the bigger bikes, um, but just remember it is, I would say, it's enduro category. Maybe the travel doesn't say it, but if you look at the geometry, it does tell you that, hey, it's a, it's a big bike. It's gonna be, you know, not something you're gonna throw around. It's something you're gonna point and go. So all that information in, so who do I think this bike is for? I think this is a bike for somebody who wants a one bike and really is, has the trails to match its capability. If you're hitting hard, just gnarly stuff, and maybe you're going to the bike park in the summer a few times uh, uh, during the summer, um, you gotta climb up to your descents and go down, and you can even shuttle this bike. If you're shuttling, and you're not gonna lose too much to the guys who are on those bigger bikes, because you know it has that geometry, maybe not as much travel, but you're gonna be able to keep up with them pretty well, and maybe be able to be a little bit more maneuverable. I would say for me, this would be something that I could consider being a one bike for me. Um, but just being 35 pounds, I mean, that that's something to think about if you're doing really, really long rides. Um, I think if you were running some carbon wheels, maybe a little bit lighter tires. Um, we're, I'm at an XT drivetrain here, so that's decently light. My wheel set's about just a, maybe over 2,000 grams for the set. So nothing super heavy on this bike. The tires you can lighten up, but then you know, you'll save weight, but it'd be a little bit scary if you're ripping tires like I do. So if you have any questions, comments, anything, let us know about down below and we'll do real quick to get back to you. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel because we're gonna have the TR and AM head-to-head -head comparison. I'm getting a lot of questions, which one should I buy? Which one's better? Which one's this, that, or another? We will answer some of those questions and hopefully give you some feedback that is helpful for you. And also the YT Izzo that I am riding right now, you are not going to want to miss that. That bike is pretty fire. Um, really fun bike, got some good and maybe a couple of different things to say about it. And don't forget to follow us on Instagram so you can see what we're doing on a daily, what we're riding, some updates of what we're riding, what we're doing, what we're buying, because we're always buying something and we're gonna have some giveaways, some fun giveaways coming up. So check us out at straightline underscore MTB on Instagram. Check us out on TikTok. We're making some silly stuff on there that's kind of interesting and straightlinemtb.com. So again, let us know down below, subscribe, like us and follow us and keep up on straightline MTB. See you on the next one.